We're taking a look at work calendars now. Work calendars exist for two reasons. Number one, to help you organize your schedule by the type of work. But number two, and more importantly, to really help you schedule work faster. Your work calendars will create all sorts of default settings so that it, as much as possible, we can just add a job to a calendar and it's gonna know how to handle it rather than to having to pick every single setting and date range for every job you wanna count, you wanna schedule. It'll make it a lot faster to schedule your jobs. You'll notice here I've got a, a few defaults set up or a few samples set up, irrigation, lawn care, mowing. Uh, work calendars are almost based on a division. So I can create, you can create as many of these as you want, but each different type of work we wanna do and schedule has its own calendar. And each calendar has its own color so that I can see it visually on the schedule differently. Most importantly though, is this idea of work calendar type. There's two different types. There's recurring. And recurring is used for service or work we're going to go back and do over and over again, like mowing or like snow plowing. Uh, there's also non-recurring, and that's work where we're going to go, and it may take us a few days or a few weeks, but we're going to go and we're going to do it and then we're going to finish. So non-recurring work assumes that you're going to schedule a whole bunch of dates back to back until the project is finished, where recurring work is going to assume we're going to go back sort of every other week or every week or that type of pattern and do the same thing over and over again. So recurring is what you use for service work and non-recurring is what you use for construction or installation type work. Let's take a look at each one of these and see how they work. When you want to add a work calendar, you go down here and click add calendar. If you're going to add a construction or non-recurring calendar, here's what the settings look like. The name is up here and I got a type and I've got a status and I've got a default manager. So if you want to assign the construction division to a particular admin in LMN time, you can do that here. The schedule color will allow me to pick the color that I want these jobs to show up in on the schedule. So you can drag this circle around or you can drag up here, up and down. That'll change the spectrum of colors that you're going to use for this. And you can pick the color you want to use for the schedule and that's what it'll use. Default crew size will be, uh, mean the default number of persons in a crew on this calendar and of course you can change this on any job so large jobs small jobs you're going to maybe flex the crew size differently all this is doing is using a default crew size so that when i do add somebody to the construction calendar in this case it's going to assume by default we're using a three-man crew but again you will be able to change that on a job by job basis now working hours per day is going to give us three fields that all relate to this here Working hours is your total number of payroll hours in the day. Productive hours are the number of hours you estimate in a day. Some people estimate a full day when they're doing work. So therefore, if I had a nine hour work day, if I was doing a job for three days, I would estimate to that job the full nine hours for three days. So for each person be 27 hours. Other companies don't do it that way. Other companies look at time on site for estimating and not necessarily the whole payroll day. If that's you, or if you fall into the latter half of that, if you don't estimate every single hour, then what you need to do is specify your productive or your job hours per day and your default unproductive or drive time hours per day. Remembering that when you schedule a job, the estimated man hours are only what you put in the estimate. Now, if you estimate nine hours a day, well, it's pretty simple for you to have your, you'll have working hours of nine and productive hours of nine and unproductive of zero. So sorry, I'll flip that around. So it works, looks like this. I got nine working hours, nine productive hours or nine estimated hours and zero unproductive. If you estimate every single hour in the workday to your jobs, you don't have any unproductive time you have to worry about. If you don't estimate that way, if you don't estimate drive time to the job as part of the estimate, or if you don't estimate drive time home from the job as part of the estimate, then you need to build in unproductive hours so that your schedule doesn't get out of whack. And that's where I might have something similar to what I did have is where you could have say seven and a half productive or estimated hours per day. And then I need to add basically an hour and a half of every day to my schedule onto my jobs to make sure I have enough time for loading and driving and setup. If you estimate all your payroll hours to your jobs, you don't need any unproductive time. If you don't estimate your entire payroll hours to each job each day, you need to set some unproductive time. Fluff factor. Uh, fluff factor will allow you to add to your schedule a percentage. So in this case, I got 10%. What this will do is take the man hours on the job and add 10% of those hours 
to build in a fluff factor for mistakes, weather problems, equipment problems, that kind of thing. It's still going to hold the crews accountable to the man hours that you set on the estimate, but on the schedule, you're going to have a 10% buffer. If we had no buffer, your schedule would constantly be running into each other each time you had a problem, and you'd be constantly having to switch that around. In order to have a nice smooth schedule, we're going to build in a, a fluff factor of, in my case, 10%. So basically one day every two weeks, we're going to add on to our schedule as buffer time. As problems happen, we've got that one day each two weeks to sort of absorb that, and our schedule isn't constantly off. Round to nearest means you're going to round your scheduled days to the nearest interval. And you can round as little as five minutes or, or up all the way to a full day. Uh, so if you're doing larger construction projects, you're going to probably want to set that to full day. You're going to round each job up to the full day. And if you're doing smaller work, little enhancement kind of stuff, you might only find it necessary to round it to an hour. That's up to you. Include weekdays. These are the weekdays that by default we're going to schedule work on. So remembering that it's construction work here that we're looking at. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those are our working days, and don't schedule work on holidays. So by default, that's what it's gonna do. Once again, when you're scheduling an actual job, if you've got something that's really under a tight timeline, you can schedule Saturdays on any specific job. These are just your defaults. That's it, for construction scheduling, that's pretty much simple. It takes care of the color, it takes care of uh, the number of hours that we're gonna need to apply to the schedule for each job, and the days that we're gonna schedule. We're going to go back now. If you were doing this live, you'd hit save, but we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at now uh, an, a recurring calendar. There's kind of two types. One would be like regular recurring, something like mowing, and then there'd be irregular recurring, something like uh, lawn care, where you kind of go um, a couple times, then you miss a few weeks, then you go back a couple of times. We'll take a look at that one. Mowing. You'll notice this, um, this uh, area is much simpler. So if you're going to create a, a work calendar and you're going to create a recurring calendar, it's going to look like this. It's active. You can have a default manager. You get your color. You get your default crew size. And you have your default unproductive hours per visit. If you estimate drive time and setup time into your jobs, then you don't need to estimate or add any unproductive time to your schedule. You've already built it into your estimates. If you don't factor drive time or setup and AM prep time into your estimates, then you need to add some unproductive time so that again, you don't over schedule work for your crew and all that. But that's it, that's all you need to set up here. But there's another really handy tab right here. It's called visit schedules. So when I'm selling mowing work, I may sell my customers, in this case, three different packages. We have a bronze, a silver, and a gold package. Bronze is 36 cuts, silver has 42 cuts. Gold is we go every single week and cut 51. Um, what you can do here is you can set up a visit schedule so that basically when somebody buys the silver package, we've already established the dates and the ranges and the frequency of cuts needed for the silver package. So if you're starting this from scratch, you're going to create new and you're going to create this package uh, from start. I'll open it so you can see what I've done here. So the visit schedule name, for instance, is silver. And that's the name of the package that you're selling your clients. The schedule interval is either manual or weekly. Manual means you're going to set every date manually. That's useful for lawn care and stuff where you go sporadically, but stuff where you go very regularly, like mowing, you're going to use a weekly recurrence pattern. Even if you go biweekly at some periods, you're going to use weekly. We'll get to the, the biweekly part in a second. Planned visits is how many contracted visits are we making as part of our silver package. So if our silver package, in this case, includes 42 visits as part of the contract, I need to build a schedule that's going to create 42 visits a year for any customer assigned to silver. I'll explain the, the set min max days and the estimated visits in a second. But when you start this from scratch, your estimated visits are going to show zero because you don't have any information down here yet. You haven't started building your, your ranges. Um, set min max days, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, if you're looking at a blank one, you're going to create new. And what new is going to give you is your first. Um, in this case, interval of visits. So my first interval is Jan 4th to March 28th. We're gonna go from Jan 4th to March 28th and cut every two weeks. Obviously, we're in a more Southern climate here uh, for those of you in North America. Um, during any period of this time, we're gonna go every two weeks. We don't wanna leave, and this is the set and max day setting here. We don't wanna leave less than 11 days. We don't wanna leave more than 20 days between cuts. 
If you haven't watched the service type video yet, you can watch that to see what this explains. But service type indicates what we're doing when we're there. Time factor is the last one. And the time factor is really handy. It's a little complicated. It's really handy. Time factor says, take our estimated hours per visit. And in this case, use 120% of those hours or add 20% to those hours. For these cuts, it's going to take longer because we're going every two weeks. So every two weeks, the property's going to look a little worse. We have to spend a little more time getting it back into shape. So add 20% to the normal estimated hours per visit because we're only going every two weeks. Now maybe I'll set this one to 85 here. From March 29th to November 7th. So what I've done now is I've clicked new again to add my second interval. And my second interval says from March 29th to November 7th, we're going every week. So every single week we go, we don't want to leave less than five. We don't want to leave more than 10 days between cuts. What this will do is if you drag a, a visit around manually, say there was a rain day or a holiday, or for some reason we couldn't do work on the site. If I reschedule the, the, the job outside its normal range, I'll get a warning if I've scheduled this cut less than five days before the last one or more than 10 days since the last one. That's what this setting will do. Time factor says, we're only going to need 85% of the estimated hours per cut because we're going every week and it's going to be in good shape every time we go. And then again, from November 8th to December 26th, we're going to go back to every two weeks. And again, I'll go on it. So you can create as many of these intervals as you want just by clicking new, 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 new until you get it down. So if you want to get really specific on your time factors for these two months, it's going to be 120 and then it's going to go 110 and it's going to go to 100 and then it's going to drop down to 75. You can do that. You can create as many intervals as you want. But the primary purpose of intervals is to allow you to set sort of an every two week or an every week threshold um, for your visit schedule. So what I've got now, and you can see here my estimated visits matches my planned visits. What I've got here is a schedule that will get me to 42 visits by the end of the year because we're going to go from this date to this date every two weeks. Then we're going to go weekly and then we're going to go back to every two weeks until the end of the year. So you click save when you're done that. And now what you've got is a schedule that you can apply to jobs. So if I have a customer who signs up for the silver package, I'm going to add them to the calendar. I'm going to pick the silver package. And all I need to do now is pick the day of the week that it's going to be scheduled on. And we're not going to do the weekday here because this is a generic um, calendar for any uh, lawn cutting. We're going to pick the day of the week when we actually schedule the specific job. That's when we know what day of the week it comes on. So there's a visit schedule for a very recurring type uh, of work. And of course, I can create a bronze package, which has only 36 visits. So there's less visits. There's greater, uh, either, either a smaller starting and end date or bigger intervals between dates. Uh, and again, I've got a, a gold package, which might just include every week we go cutting from January 4th to December 26th. You'd obviously set these ranges based on your season, when you start mowing and when you finish mowing. You don't need to start it in January. You may not start your season until uh, April. The other type of work calendar is used for uh, stuff like lawn care. And lawn care will also have these same settings, your status, your manager, your color, your crease size, your unproductive, uh, but it'll have a different kind of um, visit schedules. Your visit schedules for lawn care won't necessarily be weekly. We're not gonna have to go every week and do the same thing. It's gonna be a lot more uh, irregular. So what you can do in this case is set up, for example, this is lawn care premium. This time I'm going to use the manual schedule interview. So last time I used weekly for mowing because we, we, it's a, the schedule's predictable. Lawn care may be less predictable. So we'll use a manual schedule. And again, we're going to plan for however many visits are, are part of the premium contract that you're putting together. What I've done down here now is also, and to do this, you just hit new. I've added eight types of visits. The first one on April 15th. It may not be on exactly April 15th when we actually do this work, but I want it done no earlier than April 1st or no later than April 29th. So once again, if I try to schedule a fertilization one after April 29th or before April 1st, I'll get a warning. You can still do it, but your scheduler will get a warning saying, hey, you really shouldn't be doing this work outside this normal time range. Service type, as I mentioned earlier, if you haven't watched service type videos, go ahead and watch that. But this allows us to specify what service we're applying when we go for this visit. Visit one, two, three, four, five. Each one has a different service type. And then the time factor, once again, it takes the average estimated hours per visit and then applies the time factor. So what this is saying is fertilization one is going to take us less than the average time 
something like compost tea down here is going to take us more than the average time, just based on the time factors you apply here. I've got here a schedule for eight visits. Now you've picked specific dates, but when you get to a job, you don't necessarily have to use these dates. More importantly for this type of schedule will be that earliest and latest threshold, which you can adjust and modify for each different type of work you do. Once again, when I'm scheduling a job for lawn care, all I'm gonna do is grab the job and grab uh, this lawn care premium schedule and it'll automatically build this schedule out for that job, at which point I can make any adjustments that I need to but all my defaults are there to make job scheduling quick and easy. To actually see how to schedule a job, we've got three other videos you should take a look at. There's scheduling a, a, a construction or installation type job. There will also be scheduling a, a recurring type job on a predictable schedule, and that's for mowing. And there's also scheduling a recurring type job on an unpredictable schedule. And that'll walk you through the steps on actually taking a job and scheduling it for construction or scheduling it for something that's predictable like mowing or something that's less predictable like lawn care. Watch those videos to see us actually uh, grab a job and do the actual work of, of uh, adding a job to the schedule.